Hmm. So uh, today's class is going to be a short one. Usually I'll do a deep dive on something, but today I'm just going to be... Can you check the audio on this? I'm not sure if I'm actually going to. Uh, but today I'm just going to be doing a short uh, one on EPDM, some of the basic questions that I get all the time, or some of the uh, issues that I'll see popping up from people really not understanding what's going on. So hopefully um, this will clear things up. So just as an overview, what EPDM is, is it's a product data management. So it's a single point that we're all going to reference the same files, which is great because we don't have files spread all over everybody's machines. We don't have things with duplicate names everywhere. We can do revision control, sort of rein in the insanity of a collaborated effort. Um, it also enables you to do an audit trail, go back to past versions, things like that, uh, really easy. With uh, how you might get started. With EPDM, and there's a Go link, go slash x dash EPDM. All right, so this is hosted by our group here at X Gecko Systems, and it gets you through a lot of the stuff. There's a getting started tab. So if you haven't loaded the software, this is where you can request access to a vault, download the files. Also, I talked about the fact that I do deep dive classes. There's a whole one hour and 45 minute class that goes into lots of different little things in the software. So if you want a broader look at it, go ahead to this new user training. Also, one of the reasons we're doing this class is because this tab up here uh, using EPDM, we've got short three minute videos on different things. I'm gonna be covering these topics in this because we'd like to refresh it and not watch an hour and 45 minutes worth of content. Kevin's put together some really quick three minute videos on basics on EPDM. Okay. Let's get into vault access. So once you've got the vault started up, you're gonna see a lot of these things called blueberries. In your task tray down here, uh, hmm, any reason why that wouldn't be going, Kevin? Whoa. Okay, let's go here. Um, if I go into my task tray and I right click, you'll see there's these things that we call blueberries. It's basically the EPDM icon, but if I right click, you can see that I've got different vaults on here. You can set up as many local views as you want. What a local view is just the information from the vault that you have loaded onto your machine. Um, it's not gonna be pushed with any changes. If changes do occur, you're gonna have to manually pull those over. But you do need to log into a vault if you'd like to access it. And when you do that, it's going to ask you for your login. This is going to be your LDAP login, your single point login. So you can just use your Google login and that should let you into the vault if you've been given access. Once in, when I go into the Explorer, if I go onto the C drive, you can see these different blueberries here inside my Windows Explorer. These are different vaults. The folders inside the vaults are color coded. So if I go into this vault here for one of the projects, you can see that these um, folders are green. And what the green folders mean is that I'm logged into the system. I'm actually on the vault so I can grab information shared with the centralized SOLIDWORKS SQL database. Sometimes if you cannot get onto Google, you're gonna have to work offline. I will cover that in depth here pretty soon about the way you should do that correctly. But you'll see that in that little pop-up, it showed the folders going from green to blue. So if I open up my Explorer again, go to that same vault, you can see now that the folders are blue and that's letting me know that this information, I'm only gonna be able to see the stuff that I've downloaded to my local drive. I don't really have contact with stuff that's on the SQL database. Also, 
things in there are going to be read only unless I've checked them out beforehand. You can tell if you've checked them out beforehand if you just uh, go into one of these. And there's this writable column. If it says no, you did not check that out before you went offline. And so if you make any changes, it's going to be a read only part. You can do a save as to save it with a different name if you want to save your changes. Um, but you're not going to be able to make any changes to these parts. You can still access them. You can open them up. You can put them in assembly. You can put them in a drawing. You just can't make changes to the files. All right. I'm going to log back in. So I'm going to say I want to work online. And now it's going from blue to green. When you are offline, if you have any of these um, quick links into the vault, those will not work while you're offline. Just to let you know, you double click on them, nothing's going to happen. But since I am online, um, I can certainly go in here to anything that I've saved before as favorites, or I can go into the vault itself. All right, I'm going to go into that same folder that I was just in when you saw just the, the option for writable, yes or no. And instead of writable at this point, the column is going to be called state. I'm going to sort these. You see all these things that say private state on them? I got the guy, the LDAP of the person's thing here. What's happened there is you saved a file to the vault, but you never checked it in. What that means is the vault understands that it's part of the reference of that assembly or whatever, but there's no hard copy there, which is dangerous. If your machine were to get destroyed, you get a new machine, you wipe the hard drive, those files are gone. They're not in the central database yet. So whenever you put a file in there, just saving it to the folder is not enough. You're going to have to check it in if you actually want to save it with the rest of the community. I'm going to say that a few more times during this demonstration because you have to check it in in order to save it with the community. Okay, let's go to another folder here, another vault. And I've got a design that was done outside of the vault that I would like in the vault. Here it is. Okay, you can do regular Windows tricks. I did a shift select where I picked the top one, held the shift key, picked the bottom one, grabs everything. I can just click and drag and drop it. When SOLIDWORKS puts files into the vault like this, what it's doing is it's building the references, what parts are in the assembly, what drawings, reference, whatever. It's got all that information. It does it a lot differently than SOLIDWORKS. When it's not by the file name. It gives it an identifier that's unique, and the file name really is just some data. I can change the file name all I want at this point. It's still going to reference the same location. Sorry, but so you're saying though you generated the files locally, like you were just building locally, and then the idea is you were going to drop them into the vault. Right. So this is a design. I flashed it out and said, "Hey, you know what? I need to share this with everybody." So I've dropped it onto the vault. Right now, the vault realizes there's files and it knows the hierarchy of them. It doesn't have them, but they haven't been shared with the community yet. Because you'll see that this is checked out by me, and so if somebody goes into the vault, goes into this folder, they're going to see all this stuff in private which again, like I said, is not the way to do it. First thing you want to do is check it in, and this is going to push those files to the SQL database, and then everybody's going to have access to them. So one of the really nice things about SOLIDWORKS is the fact that it is keeping track of all those references for you. Because you know, if you've ever worked in SOLIDWORKS, not using a data manager, when you move files, when you rename files, assemblies and drawings can go all screwy because they can't find the references that they need. So I'm going to here 
I can another group select and right click. And I'll just cut these to my clipboard. Go up a level and paste them. If I take a look at these files and I go to where used, SolidWorks still realizes that these are used in the assemblies or drawings or wherever from the other folders. It doesn't pull the rug out from underneath the references like it would with just a regular Windows folder. Also to that point, I can change the name of these parts. So if I've been assigned a GPN and this file is already in there, I did it fast. Up. We wanted to do a slow double click. And I assign it the GPN. So the file name has changed. Again, if I click on this file, SolidWorks has renamed the file in the references and still references the same assembly. So that's one of the main reasons you want this in there so that you don't start losing the references to your parts. If you have the stuff in the vault, you know where it is. And if you move it around in the vault, um, the assemblies are still going to retain that information. Okay, any questions so far? You have to check it in to rename the file. I've got, a, I've got an assistant here who's holding up cue cards in case I forget something. Um, don't try to rename it when you first do that drop. Don't try and do anything when you first do that drop. The first thing you do when you drop that file is you right click and you check it in. And then you know that all the tricks are going to work. If you've got it in that private state, it's a bad thing. People can't access it, and you're going to get confused as to what exactly is in the vault and what's not. All right. Other things, once I've got this um, file in there, you can see different information as far as what's on a data card, bill of materials, where used, things like that. When it comes to the data card, this is the metadata that's going to show up on your drawing. So when you want your drawing to automatically fill in the GPN and the description and things like that, you want to have this information filled in at the data card. I meant to do it on this McMaster part just to clear up some confusion, because usually this will say at and this will say default. And people think that default means those are your default um, properties. That is the name of the configuration. SolidWorks parts always have one configuration, it's called default. <coughs> so you go there, you're actually assigning configuration specific properties. You're only assigning properties to the configuration called default. You're not doing it globally for the part. <coughs> at is the global and this is where you want to fill in your information i can't fill anything in right now see it's all grayed out when i try to go in here can't do anything you need to check it out so what's this check out check in stuff basically when you've got a file in there when people open it and they're not checked out they have read-only copies they can put them into assemblies they can make drawings they can work with them they just can't make changes if you ever want to make changes whether it's to the metadata or the information that's inside the data card or to the geometry, you're going to have to check out that file. And you see that when I check it out, now all of a sudden these become available for me to type in. There, something like that. You'll see that I've got this little save button. I hit save. It applies those to the document and even writes it to the uh, configuration as well. But you always want to do your stuff at the at because that is the top level. That's the king, the global one. Question, sir. Um, so 
With the configuration specific data card um, inputs, are you, so two part question, one, are you able to use uh, derived configurations and apply metadata to derived configurations? Absolutely. So when you have multiple configurations, see my data card right now has two tabs. Mm -hmm. Every configuration you have gets another tab. I see. So you can, the global is going to be assigned to everybody. If you go into any one of the configuration specific, that'll override that global. I see. Okay. Did that answer your question? Yeah. It, it, uh, kind of a part of you. It, so then if I were to uh, put in metadata into a configuration and then let's say put it into the global, will it then re-overwrite all the configurations or will it retain that information that I've kept? I'm actually going to show an example of oh, how okay. that works. All right. <laughs> um, Lars, another question. Sure. What's up? You saved the file name as the GPN number. Yes. Now, now we've lost any descriptor the description. What what is that part? Is it typical? Is it alphabet policy to name files as the GPN, or is there not a standard? Uh, it is typical in in almost all the projects that we have here. You want to get a GPN on the on the part as soon as you know that it's going to be going out around other people, um, just so that you don't have here's my GPN and here's my file name. That can get confusing for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so it is it is best practice to put in a GPN early and use that as the file name. Um, you can't get around it, but it is policy in most of the groups. Thanks. Mm -hmm. does, do most projects fill out the description field with the agile yes. description? or so, so, so that might be the way to get that. Yeah, so that would be your agile description. <laughs> GPN. In fact, there is a connector tool for uh, several of the projects that will automatically get that from agile and push it into your file for you. <laughs> okay, so I, I saved the, the change, but I haven't checked it in. Again, the change has only happened on my machine. If I want everybody else to see this GPN in the description, I need to check it in. So I'll do that. And put it back in. Okay. In here in Explorer, if you ever see this open search, you can search for information on that metadata. You can either search by name, description, number. It depends which group you're in, what choices they've given you as far as uh, your search. But if I want to see you know, what type of screws are in here, I can run a search in the vault and find anything that matches that description. If I'm not sure, I can hit the data card. I'm not sure about that. I can hit the preview. So this is a thumbnail. Let me go up a level here. Because when you're getting uh, information from a part, it's pretty quick uh, to show you a more uh, detailed view. In this display over here, under options, I have this thing set to use the bitmap and the UI. Let me explain what those are. So you see that when I select on something, this is actually loading up an e-drawing. So I can get a 3D view on it, which is pretty cool because then I can get a better idea if the thumbnail is not really showing what I want. I can get that. The problem is that when you select on an assembly, it takes longer to load that e-drawing up, especially depending on the size of the assembly. If you have a giant assembly, it may take a long time just to show you that preview. So how do you get around that? Well, one thing, you could just have the thing set to data card, and then when you're clicking through, it's not going to be reloading e-drawings for everything that you click. Or if I do want to use the preview, because it's kind of nice, you can even spice it up a little. If I go into my display, options. There's this uh, UI, which is kind of nice because I can bring up front, top, right, <clears throat> um, roll it around, and even start taking measurements off of this thing to make sure I've got the right thing before I open it up. This takes even longer. So the best way to do it was how I had it at the beginning, where you have it set to a bitmap, and you have the UI on. Then when I'm selecting these, it just shows the bitmap, 
But if I'm more curious, I can double click on the bitmap and it'll load up the e-drawing for me. So that's the best way to roll as far as that preview screen. Some other things that uh, drive people crazy as far as these views is sometimes you'll go into a subfolder and all of a sudden you've got big pictures or you know large icons instead of the details. What you want to do to set that up correctly is if I pick the vault I want and I set it to the correct details or whatever I want, if I go to this organize area and change the folder and search options, click view. It's recommended to hide extension types on here, but if I hit apply to folders, that means every folder in the vault is going to be set to details. And so I don't have to keep doing that. Oh, how come I keep getting the thumbnails? How can I keep getting these giant pictures? Um, do that, and then every time you'll get the same columns that you want. Also, as far as columns go, you can play around with what the columns show and where they're located. And that's just on your machine. It'll Next time when you close the Window Explorer and open it up, it should retain those columns. Okay, let's get into some SOLIDWORKS here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to open this thing up in SOLIDWORKS and there's two ways to access information inside of your vault. You can do it in the Explorer, which is typically where I do any stuff like metadata or file movement, stuff like that, basic file management types of things. Um, but sometimes I want to do stuff that's actually inside of the SOLIDWORKS interface. The SOLIDWORKS interface, once you've loaded up EPDM, will have an add-in. So usually you want add-ins turned off because uh, some of them, like scan to 3D or routing or rendering, take a while to load up all the databases and engines and everything. Um, EPDM only takes a couple of seconds to load up. So this left check will turn it on in this session, but it's better to have this one checked on. And then every time you start SOLIDWORKS, the vault will get started up for you here too. And you'll see that over here in the vault view, we've got the hierarchy, the drawing at the top. Here's the assembly that's in the drawing. Um, anything that has this little pencil has had some sort of change just by opening this thing up. Um, it's showing that I've changed it. If you ever see these exclamation points, what that means is, that part has changed, and that change has not been checked at the assembly level yet. So what happened to that part? I changed the name to 250. This assembly has never been saved with that 250 as the name. It's still grabbing the correct part, but it's just giving you a flag that, hey, this has changed. It's, it's basically getting the latest for you and just letting you know, hey, these have all changed recently. You can right-click. There's lots of different options on things to do. I say open and bring up that file. And you'll see that these come in read only. If you'd like to check them out, there's an option where it'll ask you at the very beginning whether you want to check it out. If it didn't, you can just right click and say check out. When you've got an assembly like this, it will show you all the files. I can check out the drawing. I can check out any of the subparts that I want. I do want to check out some subparts, but I don't really know their names right now. So I'm going to give that a second. So I check out the assembly, and now I want to find those files. I don't know their name. If you select something in the graphics area, of course, it highlights over in the feature manager tree, but it also highlights here. So I can right click when I see it turn blue and check out files on the fly. Also with the right click, there's a choice to go to properties. What the properties do from that menu is they take you to the data card of that particular item that you right click. So here you can see that information that I filled in in Windows Explorer, saved it to the file, it's in there. 
this part that I checked out, if I go to the properties, there's nothing in there. So here's where that at default thing comes. That's actually the default configuration. So I wanna put my information here at the top level. Make sure I get the, the name right here and the description. Is it Impeller or Pelor? ER. 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 Right. Spelling counts. Because <laughs> right. somebody's going to want to search for that and it doesn't know that I misspelled. Okay, so I've got this information here. Let's take a look at this part. If I open up, I hit save. This little mark used to be an equal sign. You see how it turns to a green dot? You want to pay attention to those dots as well. So a gray equal sign means this thing that you are looking at is the same thing that everybody's looking at on the ball. If it's red, it means you have an older one. You have not updated your files, so be careful. <laughs> if it's green, you've saved your changes, but you've never saved them to the top level vault. So a green one is a newer than the vault, only happening on my system so far. And all I've done so far is added the metadata. Where's that metadata go once it's on, on the data card? It goes to the file properties of the part. So you can see that here's that GPN, here's that correctly spelled impeller. It also writes it to the config specific. See how it's got the same inf information here? So this gets to your question that you had for me earlier. A common thing that people get mistaken by is They'll put information here and they'll go back to, the, back to the drawing and none of that changed because this overrides that, right? So what you wanna do is you always wanna do it by the data card. When you do it by the data card, it pushes it to both places. If you're doing it here, you need to manually go and make sure you hit all the configurations you want that name change to happen. Um, and also to get to your question, when, you're, when you've got a multiple configuration part, Whatever configuration is active, that configuration specific tab writes to that. I see. Okay. So, so that's the difference is this is what's inside the file, and those data cards are just writing to the file. Yeah, information. I see. And so it uses the same sort of uh, links and things like that when you get into the title blocks and the bills of materials that a regular SOLIDWORKS file would because mm -hmm. it's using that same location. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So is the data card just like a VB script that's writing to each of those comp like property? Basically, it's, okay. it's just something where, and like I said, it's nice because it pushes it to all the configurations at once. You're yeah. not going through there and going, well, which one is this and which one is that? If you do it at the data card, it's a, it's a you know, push for the whole file. Awesome. So in a case where you actually would need different configuration information, you would have to go to SOLIDWORKS and fill out the configuration specific information if you wanted it to be different on the data card. Most of the time, the data card is set to sync all across every configuration. I so see. If you did need to store different information, you have to do it through SolidWorks. Interesting. But you can read it in the Explorer via the data card if you have changed it already at the part like in SolidWorks. Yes. OK. All right. I'm also going to do a geometry change while I'm in here. So I'm going to change this to a four blade propeller and hit save. Okay, again, still not shared with anybody. Before I do, I'm going to quickly make a drawing for this. And the only reason I'm doing that is just to show you that um, When I do that, the, the information will fill into, you know, whatever metadata I filled in will go into the drawing. <clears throat> okay, so this is the first time that this um, file has been saved to the vault. 
When you do create something in the vault while you're active, the first thing it does when you save to that folder location is it brings up the data card and says, okay, you know, what's the part number that you're after? Um, it depends which uh, project you're in. Sometimes this will read right off of the model and you don't have to fill it in manually. And then you won't accidentally misspell it or anything like that. But here we're with that. And let's take a look. So again, I've made these changes. I have yet to share them with the drive. Also, this, when it says version one and it's still checked out, that is that private state. The, the zero that I put in there was letting <coughs> EPDM know that, hey, this is a drawing that's attached to this part. That's all it knows about it so far, but it does not have the hard copy for people to open up. So to share it with the rest of the group, what do you do, George? Check it in. That's right. I was hoping you were listening and taking notes. <laughs> all right. Tried to bust me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. With that, all my changes, the metadata for the part, the geometry that's new for the part, and this drawing, it's all going into the vault being stamped as a version. So now you see that I've got version three of the drawing, version three of the part. Don't confuse that with revs. You can have infinite versions of the part. All that means is that has been saved once upon a time into the vault. It's nice to check them in every once in a while. Some people are like, well, I don't want to check it in. I'm not done yet. That's okay. You know, at five o'clock, if you go and get hit by a Google bus and your laptop is smashed into the thing, no one's ever going to have that change that you did. But if you check it in before you go, at least we've got a record of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, when I right click and I say get, I can pick and choose an old copy. I can say, what did it look like at version one? What did it look like at version two? I don't see the difference, those kinds of things. So <clears throat> if you never check it in, first off, people won't get to see it. If you only check it in once and then check it out and never check it in again, all of your changes are gone and you cannot dial them back. If you periodically check in, you can say, oh, this is what I was doing on Wednesday. This is what I was doing on Saturday, whatever. You can see when you were, and you can go back to that time or forward to that time. Where, where do you see the notes here? Like, if I want to know, like, what notes you put for version 2, for example, or version 3. Even. Comments. Is, is there a way to sort of show that? Like, can you add a column here? Or? Um, if you put the, the drop down in the add-in, it'll actually show you the notes next to the versions. The add-in. and Okay. Mm -hmm. The drop down next to get. This guy. This one? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I put a comment on one of them. <laughs> so this is another reason why people should put comments on things. <laughs> um, is that a lot of times you'll see no comment or, or a blank space or a question mark if you're forced to do a comment. Some people do that. It's always a better idea just to say, hey, even if it's, you know, checking in for Friday, going on vacation, whatever, some kind of hint as to why you dropped it in there is nice. Um, so that when Steve wants to know why it's there, he can dial that up and look it up. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, so now again, you can see that some of these changes have happened, but they've never been checked in with that assembly. I'm gonna save this. And then I'm gonna close out. And I remember, oh, geez, I need to get out of here. I gotta check this stuff back in. You do not have to open up every single file or you don't even really have to do a search for things. To check in anything that you have open, what you wanna do is you wanna find the folder that you are working in, right click that and choose check in. It'll find any files that are checked out in that folder. I like that trick. 
Didn't know about that one. You didn't know about that one? I, I had to give you some kinds of tricks, George, <laughs> just to make it worth you coming here. Yep, it was worth it now. Okay. So, checking in and checking out. Hopefully, I've uh, described most of what's on this thing. You need to <coughs> check in stuff to share it. Otherwise, it's going to be in the private state. Um, you can keep stuff checked out a few days, but periodically check it in, just so we have a record of what's going on. can, uh, at times, take a look at where the uh, progress of the design is going instead of just, all of a sudden, here's three months of work I'm going to check in, because that is dangerous. Um, also, when you're checking something out, <coughs> Other people can still use it. They can still make a drawing. They can still throw it into an assembly, do whatever they want, run a, a test on it. They just can't save any changes to the information or the geometry. So what it is, basically, it's the talking stick. Only one person gets to make changes at a time. Once you've checked it out, everybody else can do read-onlys. You can make your changes. When you check it in, the rest of them will have to get the latest version on that. A question. What's up? Let's say. Uh you want to use a particular part from an assembly for an entirely different assembly. Mm -hmm. Do you think that part would be perfect fit, barring one or two dimensions? Is there a way to duplicate that part and unassociate it with the other? Yeah, if you just do a, a file, um, if you've got the part open in its own and you do a file save in, save as into the vault, it'll be a new file. You, uh, the reason I say you should have the part open itself is because if you do that with the assembly open, that can cause changes because the assembly will not be referencing the new name. So if you do a save as and the reference, the assembly and the drawing and everything, it'll take that new name, which is a trick sometimes you want to do. <laughs> if that's not what you want to do, you got to close out all the reference stuff. Just go with the part, do a save as. It's independent now. Awesome. Okay. Is it a save as copy or a save as direct? Uh, it's a save as. Uh, it really doesn't matter. The, the, the save as that you do with, uh, uh, it, it is going to be a save as copy because you can't use the same name. Correct, yeah. So when you try to save something with the same name to your local file, it'll let you do it if you put it in the vault. But when you go to check it in, it'll be like, hey, I've already got a GPN yeah, with yeah, that yeah. number, no good. Yeah. So you do need to save a copy. Mm. Um, yeah, okay. The real major difference is save as will replace any active Reference that are open in any other models in your or mm -hmm. SolidWorks. If you save as copy, <coughs> just a one-off save. Yep. The reference is built. Yeah. Okay, so I did want to mention one thing that I forgot while I was here was um, a get latest. So if I go into this uh, thing that I've been working on with some people recently. If I say get latest version, it goes into that sort of like when I right click and say check in and it takes a look at everything that I've got. See where the versions are the same? That's unchecked, but that's a new one. That's a new one. That's a new one. So people have been making changes. This one's got a lot of changes. I'm 12 versions behind. So you do want to periodically go through there. If you're collaborating with people, before you open up your assembly, right click on the folder, get latest, make sure you've got everybody's changes in there. So when you open up your assembly, you realize you're working with the latest stuff. Because if you don't, it's gonna use what's on your local cache. You see when I say get, all of a sudden, it's going out there, it's grabbing the assemblies, it's grabbing <coughs> the arms, it's giving me all the versions to make sure that my entire camera system folder is up to date. And that's definitely one of those things. If I didn't reiterate, check in four or five times already. Get latest is the other thing I want to reiterate. If you're working with a team, you want to make sure everybody's changes are in your design. OK. Next thing is talking about the state. So SOLIDWORKS uh, EPDM allows you to do this thing that's called a workflow, which basically is the life cycle of the part. Um, it allows you to release parts officially. I talked about so far I've been version, but I've never released this thing out and then, you know, made a rev to that sort of thing. This is where the state comes um, <coughs> into play. Let me go back into the XCAD folder. 
where I've got my information. And remember I made the drawing for this thing. I don't remember what it is. I can always hit preview. Okay, I want this thing to be released. We're sending this thing out today. I don't want anybody making changes. So if I box, if I group select both of these, just hold the control key and pick both of them, I have the ability where I can change the state. This is a really simple one. Uh, some projects will have a quick release as well here where you can just bump it to the next rev instantly. This one is a holding thing, sort of for red lines. So when I say send to review, it does several things for me. If you're in one of the projects that's using the connector tool, doing this is creating the neutral files for me, which is a solid file for the model and a PDF of the drawing. And then I can send the PDF of the drawing to whoever's supposed to approve it. They take out their red pen. If they say it's all great, I have the choice where I can release it. If they say, no, this is terrible, I can return to edits, it bumps it back, I can make my changes. You need to make, you need to bump it back because when it's in review or when it's in released, um, like we've got going here, I think I got it confused because it's a, uh, do you see that SOLIDWORKS coming up in the background? Um, that is it actually creating the neutral files for me in the background. Um, and it is still chugging on. So let me try a little more than just a double click. I've also experienced you can totally disrupt the neutral file generation process if you're trying to, with the errant clicks too, just as a little tidbit. Right, because it, it will open up in the session of SOLIDWORKS it's running in the background um, and then it'll close down. And so you're like, what just happened? Um, so yeah, it is better to, uh, while it's doing those neutral files to, to be a little better than just double clicking from the Explorer. Okay. So I've got this thing, it's read only. Um, I can open up the part. Um, but you'll see that when I try to check it out, check out is grayed out. So when the thing is in review or when it's released, it's going to be a read only forever because that's the idea. You don't want people making changes while you're waiting for your approval. You don't want people making changes to a released part. So your vault should have that set up where you're not going to be able to do that. You can um, change state on the fly. See when I right click, I have the ability if someone's like, hey, you know what? Uh, we need to make a change. Uh, I go, okay, well, did somebody already see this? Yeah, we already sent that first one out. Okay, well, let's release this. <clears throat> so that's going to bump it up. And it's going to lock the file down to a state called release, and no one's going to be able to make changes to it without incrementing that revision. So that's sort of the you know protection against people making changes to something that you're already done with. I can also go once it's been released, my next thing is to bump it to a new revision. Okay, at this point, now that it's at Rev2, <clears throat> I can actually check this part out. Or before when it's in review or when it's in release, I'm locked to read only. The only time I am able, able to work on it again is if I inc increment to that next level. Lars, what is the thumbnail that you just had on the, in the right column? Have three impeller blades and the actual part is four? 
Has something not updated? That little preview, right where you're mousing, doesn't look like the part that we have open. Right, because I haven't uh, checked this in yet. Okay. When I check it in, it should refresh. Okay, so changing state is, is not checking it in. No. Okay, so I'm going to go grab the keyway here. Dial up the size I'm after. Locate it. Uh, oops, that is the wrong one. I meant to hit save. All right, so that's how you can make changes to a document. Um, you know, you need to push it through the system. That's what the change state does. Also, while I'm in here, might as well show you on the XCAD. Uh, in the neutral files, whoops, that is not the right one. There you go. If I sort these by modified, here's the stuff that it did today. So it created these files for me, step file, PDF file. Um, so that's, if you have the connector tool, um, that'll do it for you. Also, if you have the connector tool, most of the vaults are set up where I can right click and I can convert a drawing to a PDF or I can convert a solid from my model. Okay. So that's working in the vault. Quick question about yes, uh, neutral file generation. Um, mm -hmm. Is it always the same location that we'll always put it in the standard neutral file folder location? Depends on your, depends on which project you're in. Um, oh, okay, I see. Uh, but most of the projects will have a top level neutral file folder and that's mm -hmm. where most of them are going. Okay. Which, which one are you in? Loon. Loon, yeah, they have a neutral file folder. Yeah, is there a way that you can set up neutral file folders inside like just subfolders that you've created just so that you have like project relevant neutral files? Yes, we can talk about that offline. Okay. Okay. The last thing, uh, last couple of things I want to talk about uh, is working <clears throat> offline because this one gets people um, into trouble often. If you know you're going to be offline, then you should check out whatever you want to work on before you leave. Um, if you don't have access to, uh, you know, Google A, you're gonna it's it's gonna be problematic for you. Um, if you do have VPN access, that's what you should do, because you can still get your SOLIDWORKS license, you should still get to EPDM if you're working on VPN. If you cannot get into Google A at all, um, you have to work offline, you have to, to give that some forethought. If, to, if you want to use SOLIDWORKS, you're going to have to make sure that you grab a license off this Solid Network License Manager. Um, Otherwise, when you go off site and you start up SOLIDWORKS, it says can obtain a license and then you're not doing anything. So first things first, make sure you have a license. Also, inside the vault, anything you want to work on, you want to make sure that you check that in or check that out beforehand because you're going to be making changes. So I'm going to check that out beforehand and then I'm going to switch to offline. Whenever you switch it, it always drops out your Windows Explorer. Um, no real way around that, though. Here's another quick one for you, George. If you hold down the Windows key and press the letter E, you get a new Explorer page. Open up to my computer. Yeah, that's an old one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You've been to my classes before. Fine. 
What uh, what does the go offline uh, thing do exactly under the hood? Okay, so under the hood, what it's done is remember I talked about the fact that there's a master database and there's your local cache. Mm -hmm. When you're online and these folders are green, you're going to get updates as to who's got stuff checked out. Um, it'll also show you what version it's at and what version you're at. So you've got an idea of where am I in the vault. Mm -hmm. Once I have checked, once I've gone offline, these things turn blue. The information gets a lot less where all I can really see is whether or not I can write to it. I don't know if anybody's working on it, that sort of information. Um, you should probably find that out. That's another good reason to check it out, just so you know people aren't changing your part while you're trying to change your yeah, part yeah. locally. But that's what's happened. You've decided, okay, instead of having my local file that can look into the vault, I'm just looking at a local folder right now. Mm -hmm. So with a part that has a yes, I can double click, I can uh, make changes to those. My double click is really just hating me today. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, sorry. Okay, sorry. There was no voodoo. I actually did just drop out. <laughs> Let me see if uh, my saw works is still going here. <clears throat> Why would it tell me that? <laughs> Just say no. Okay. <laughs> say no? Yeah. Okay. Well, that doesn't do me any good. Did you have it open in 19 and 18? Probably. Just close out of 19. All the other. Yeah, that's what's going on. It's checked out by a future version. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty nineteen, that's future past. <laughs> right, that out. Okay. There we go, without any problems. So that was a problem. It, it was open in another uh, window. But yep, let's go into here. So you'll see that this is a read write file. So I can make changes to it. Okay, I'll find the keyway that I'm after. I hit save. Now that save has happened locally, I'm not going to have to go back into the vault, check it in once I get back to work. But before I do that, I just remembered that I needed to make a change to another part that I did not check out. So I'm going to find that part. Here's the one. So, okay. Here is a common issue that people will run into. I forgot to check it out. I need to make a change. I have the local thing on my copy. Why can't I just make the change and then put it back in when I'm at work? You can, but you have to do it right. So you're not going to be able to do it from the vault because it's going to open up as read only because it's got that flag thrown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of that on my desktop. So the version that I'm working with right now is not the one in the vault. It's just one that's on my desktop. Nobody is going to see these changes till later on because it has nothing to do with the file that's in the vault. Let me just make a quick change here. I hit save. There we go. For the other part, 
And one more thing I want to do. I want to make a drawing of this before I get back in. So let me choose to make a drawing. Okay, and I'm going to save it to that same place inside of the vault. Thing is, is I am not logged into the vault right now. So what's gonna happen when I do that, it's gonna give me that. It's gonna say, hey, I saved it there, but I couldn't make a private state or any of that with the vault because I'm not on the vault. That's okay. Okay. So I did my changes. Close out all of this stuff. I get back into work. And I want to make those changes happen in the vault. So first thing I need to do is I need to go back to work online. Okay, now that I'm online, I'm going to go back into that uh, project where all my stuff is stored. And you see, I got a couple things going on. I've got this one that I've got checked out. Is there another meeting? Probably. Um, I'm, I'm going to run through this quick. I check this in. However, this drawing was not in there. When you're like that, what you need to do is right click on the file and say, add file to vault. Now that file is in with the rest of the people. You still need to check it in. Okay, for the other part that I made changes to, what I need to do is I need to take ownership in the vault because it's a read only right now. But if I check this out and then I go to my desktop and I drag and drop this one in, it says, hey, you've already got a file of this name. Do you want to overwrite it? Say yes to all. That's the correct way to do that. What that is, that's going to just drop that geometry into the part at the next version. If you do a save as into the vault, that's a bad thing. That starts back at version zero. You overwrite all the changes ever in that part. So if you're going to do a part that's already existing, you need to drag and drop and copy over, just not do a save as. Uh, again, there's a benefit to wanting to do it either way. You just have to know which way is correct. And hopefully this will clear that up. Okay. And it would work the same if you just said like copy paste from like. You, yes, yeah. copy and paste does it too. It's yeah. just the, the physical save yeah. as when you do that, it thinks you're trying to start off. From yeah, scratch. okay, okay. Okay, that was the thing. I'm sorry we went over a little bit more than an hour. I will have this posted for everybody, and thanks for coming. Awesome. Thanks, Larson.